Good morning, Geek Show. My name is Alex, and with me I got, as always, Eric. Eric, how are you doing? I'm <laughs> good. We are at Ignite, so everything is fine, and we have such a special guest yeah, today. We Paula are so <laughs> happy to have you here. Paula, say hi to our audience. So. Yeah, hi. How's everybody doing? That's great. So today, uh, probably our topic is SharePoint again. Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Once again. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> a good thing. So no, we're totally happy that you are here, Paula. Thank and you so much. For sure, we're talking today about some security stuff. But first, just let us know what has your conference been so far. So what have you done? I've, I've seen you walking really around busy. like crazy and. It Just has let been us know. super crazy because uh, I have also the community reporter role at Microsoft Ignite. So that makes me really to jump <laughs> to many different locations and uh, have different interviews with different people and so on. I also had my session yesterday. Oh, yeah. So um, until actually yesterday, it has been crazy. Now it's just like I'm super relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> super, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's good for us. So. Yeah, yeah and absolutely. Your session Thank was you. Packed, packed. I mean, it was really, packed. I mean, the room was full. Absolutely. It was, it was full. Like and um, I've heard that not everybody managed to get actually to the room, which I'm really sorry about this, but uh, luckily they were playing it at the Beamer over here, so that's not too yeah, bad. Yeah. <laughs> Th that's a good thing with the live recording or the recording in general, that people can like watch the, the session uh, later and True, but you miss out a little bit of the energy, right? That's true. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the point. That's true, absolutely. And it's actually the first, like, the first point where you are on the opposite opposite of the micro, like, not interviewing people, so <laughs> you get interviewed. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> so, so how was Ignite for you? Did you did you enjoy it so far? Yeah, Ignite is very good. Uh, it's always an opportunity for me to meet up uh, other geeks, and really, this is something that I care uh, about the most, and I really like to be with people and talk to people and with people and have these conversations and interviews so it's really something that uh, gives me energy yeah, yeah. so um, everybody like maybe likes to even attend the sessions some some of the guys like to socialize a little bit and uh, ignite is pretty much delivering these two areas to you yeah there have been any so special announcement you were so happy about yeah, that microsoft did it any something you've seen that was mind-blowing so for me it was the truck over there with this <laughs> Azure stack in the back, so what was it for you? Uh, the, the passwordless thing. So passwordless, yeah. yeah. So this is pretty much, I mean, yeah. what is nice for security as well. Totally. And it's also bringing a little bit of a comfort for everybody. Um, we, we're living in a world when we are like choosing in IT certain types of paths and we kind of like follow, but then something innovative comes into place and we're like, hmm, could that work out? But then if it's a great idea, then just, uh, you know, it, it pops in pretty much immediately into our lives, yeah? And, th and th I think that's a, a, a great opening point for a, a question that I had in mind. Um, how do you see the role of the CISO guys in, in, the, uh, in, the, in the companies? I mean, it's pretty challenging to like keep stay ahead on every discussion, everything that's going on. I mean, we saw plenty of announcements in terms of security at Ignite. It's even for us guys tough to like get everything and, and understand everything. But for the CISOs, I bet it's Worse? Yeah, CISO, CISO's role is a very challenging role. Like, um, I do, I'm dealing with CISOs pretty much all the time because that's my job. Uh, I'm the CEO of the company. At the same time, doing pen tests, consulting customers, etc. So we have these conversations about what is actually a problem nowadays in cybersecurity. And I think that the biggest problem that we have right now is not really a technology, but it's a lack of a skill set. Yeah. And um, I like to quote one thing, um, and sometimes I feel like re I'm repeating myself, but Financial Times actually made a very good point because they said that by 2019, we're going to be in the need of a 6 million cybersecurity professionals. Oh, wow. While uh, with the current development of what we have, we're going to be from 4 to 5 million. Uh, so we are like 1.5 million sort of short, which means many things. Yeah. So it, m it means that maybe even security services, I mean, and their prices will go up because the skill set matters. So it matters really how much you know in cybersecurity. Yeah. So the companies will suffer because they will need to pay for it more. But on the other hand, if you want to hire someone good, you need to grow this person from the beginning. And I really think that this is an approach that companies should take. And it's even very tough to hire people overall. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> in, in okay. yeah. the problem the, right uh, the, se <laughs> the, the security consultant or security market overall is like empty. There's th There are no people to it's hire. It's very difficult. I, it's not that bad. It's just very difficult to, to do that because, um, and I'm also, and I was also struggling with that problem and we are all struggling with the problem all the time. But the thing is that who is actually a cybersecurity consultant? So like if we look at the person and if we try to define that person, it's a person that could be uh, growing uh, under the wings of some kind of an enterprise 
or it could be a consultant, right? Yeah. But, so that's kind of my point. So you might be, for example, an independent con consultant living your life and just like, you know, being a one month company or something like that. But that is a qu pretty hard job, I would say, because that's you need to do your own sales. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so you need to advertise yourself to customers. Maybe you don't need to in general, but in general, you need to talk to the customers. Yeah about something else than your favorite technology. And that costs yeah? a lot of time, right? That's my point. So sometimes, like when we are searching for the security consultants, we pick that area because these people usually are a little bit tired of dealing with, you know, <laughs> yeah, the sales yeah, part. Yeah. <laughs> that's so true. And uh, that's why we're like, hey, you don't need to do a sales part anymore. Come over and you're going to do your geeky stuff. Yeah. So this is how you acquire a good talent. Yeah. But the young talent is also a very nice uh, challenge because in security, you need to be up to date pretty much every day. So it's a mindset, as we always say. I mean, to me, someone could finish whatever, psychology, but if there is a good approach and a good mindset, that is the person to grow in cyber. Yeah? Good okay. energy. Absolutely. But a, a good thing you're talking about is talent, and we're right in front or beneath the diversity and tech booths <laughs> stuff. So actually, everybody here at Ignite sees Man, 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 and sometimes man. I, I think I it's the suffer. only conference okay. where men <laughs> have to wait to go to the restroom, and women are always laughing about us. So, oh yeah. what about this role of women in technology, and especially maybe women in security? What do you see there? Is this probably an opportunity to get some new people into this? Yeah, you know, <laughs> it's a long time, but just to give you an example, uh, in one of the biggest banks, actually, who manages the major like mainframe over there, it's it's her, it's she. Okay, so cool. I'm actually proud of that particular single <laughs> event out of many other like situations when there are actually guys doing it. And I mean, gender to me, it's not very important. It's what matters really is how much you know. Yeah. So, but yeah. a couple of years ago, it maybe was a little different. And what is my perspective on that is that uh, I actually established a woman in technology like 12 years ago in, in my country, in Poland. Okay. Um, and I'm not doing it anymore because I don't have time. But at that time, I really thought, and I and I don't change my mind over here, that that was actually needed because in the, I mean, there is a difference, of course, in general, in general, yes. But um, if there we are like part of the minority group to step in to majority, it's always like, you're always like maybe a little bit shy, yes. Uh, okay. And what was my message at the time, and I don't change that message, is it really matters how much you know. So it's really inspiring that if you know something, I, the first thing I do, and I'm that kind of a person, I like to share. So it's like, I learned this, I'm like, hey, do you want to listen? And of course, there might be no one that wants to listen, but I'm still like, <laughs> who wants to listen? Yes. But you're doing it good, so I probably everybody Thanks. wants to listen to you. So. <laughs> I mean, it's it's an interesting subject too. Yeah? So I, it kind of defends itself. Cybersecurity is a cool subject. Yeah. So, um, so in general, what I think actually brought a change, and I'm really happy to see that, is that I'm pretty sure that you, you guys can see, for example, more women around us now than in the past. Oh yeah, absolutely. And it's a young generation that got that message. Yeah? So we are all part of the young generation. But in general, like w when I was doing this 12 years ago and there were like women around 20s, so now they are like 30 something. Yeah. Yeah? So this is your professional life. Like they are already in their professional careers. So if that brought the change, I'm very proud to see that. Okay, and sure. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not the only one that was doing this. So. If this is what we see right now, this is the result of what was happening in the past, awesome. Cool. Yeah. And out of us three, I'm the non-security guy, so <laughs> you both are so deep into Let security. Me yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, yes, I know about security, but um, it's not my day-to-day -day focus. I'm more on so the... So how does your password look like? Can you yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's very complex. It's around 18 digits, so uh, <laughs> it's complex a bit. What did uh, you include in it? <laughs> so should, should I write it down right First now? First name of your mother or something? Yeah, yeah. No, but actually, you, you said it's about your knowledge. But yeah. When I start today, I probably finished yeah, my studies. I try to start now to get into this, and we see that all the topics are moving faster and faster and faster. And also for us as professionals, it's hard to keep up, like Alex said. Uh, what's a good point to start? How, how do you get into this topic to grow your knowledge to probably be at some time the guy or the woman in tech? If you are like a young person after uni, yeah, that's, yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, I have my opinion about that. And um, in general, I really think that for someone that has not experience, it's quite hard to be hired in the organization that immediately gives you some kind of a responsibility on the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So I really think that the good way to start for young people is to start at the consulting companies. And the reason why I say it is because consulting company will never give you a responsibility 
to be doing the implementation at the customer side, yeah. but they will grow you. Yeah. Yeah. Because this is in their business, so they earn money on it. Yeah? So yeah. basically, uh, if you're young, you can jump into that kind of environment. Yes, it's going to be hard. I was sleeping and I still do like four hours yeah. per day uh, <laughs> to technically do some stuff, whatever, assist in the PKI implementations in the past. Yeah. But that was really worth it. And I'm really thankful for whoever grown me. So I was behaving in a consulting company. Uh, yeah, I would be totally scared if I like enter a company, uh, get, get a job uh, hired at the company, um, and uh, like uh, then I'm responsible for the firewall, even if it's not the first line firewall, and they say, hey, deal with the firewall, then I have no idea what I'm doing. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's something If something happens, that's it's your fault. That's a horrible so. situation. So yeah, I totally agree on that. And I think what is also an issue is that because we are in a very uncomfortable conditions, yep. and we all tend to kind of like go to the direction where we want to feel comfortable, you start feeling comfortable in the area that you don't have a full expertise in, true. which kind of like makes you to do even worse mistakes. Yeah, true. You know, so you are like learning this, but you don't really feel if it's a good way or a bad way. And there's like not many people to challenge you. Uh, and, and in the, the consultancy uh, world, there are <laughs> actually challenging you yeah. all the time. And you will do these mistakes, right? So, so there's no no way around. It's it's not like you can you cannot protect from making mistakes in security because you don't know everything. And there are still there are always people that are smarter than you in in in, in the one that are. And I don't always like to turn it I don't always like to say that like even the company was hacked and then there's this forensic teams that comes to place it's a question of who was smarter hacker or you and yeah. there is always someone being smarter and of course that True. kind of like minimizes somewhere in the bottom and there are like sm small mistakes that we can make but still I mean there's always someone that looks at security from a different angle and I really appreciate that also at Microsoft Ignite, at the different security sessions, different conversations, everybody has his own experience. Sure. And in security, it's a relatively new subject. Really sharing is caring. So yep. I know this about that environment. This is how you exploit it. And someone says, oh, there was this tool that one of the geeks wrote. Do you want to have it? OK, fine. And then we exchange. And yeah, this is really what I love about Ignite. Yeah, yeah we, Eric and myself, we had a Trust and Tech Global Security Roundtable on Tuesday, right? Yeah. And there were so many people from all the different like areas. They they all were CISOs, right? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> and there were, were people from firewall, and then we had network guys. Then we had some application security people there, <coughs> and everybody brought into his uh, brought in uh, his experience, and uh, it it all was about sharing, yeah. sharing they were information, were sharing yeah. their experiences with tools and <coughs> not tools yeah. and so uh, things that. like this. And it was it was great. So. Uh, sharing experience, I think this is what this event is all about. So yeah. you Absolutely. should see what happens and you should learn what's going and what's not going. So, so actually, so we're right in the middle of it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so consulting business is a good starting point. How do you proceed then? So how do we start? Yeah, I would suggest for juniors, for someone who starts to actually um, get engaged with some kind of a consulting company so that they will challenge you to the point that you need to kind of like act faster. Because as I mentioned, I mean, it's a business, it's kind of cruel. But on the other hand, this is how you challenge yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Not everybody is happy of, uh, with doing this. Of course, not everybody needs to be like challenged all the time. People don't feel comfortable about it. But security is actually that kind of a business, in my opinion. So you are basically in a consulting company. Now, you need to find yourself a good leader, good mentors that will give you uh, good examples. And in security, again, it's very important because I'm always saying one thing that we, we have like 20 years of experience working in IT environments, but we sometimes lack basics in security. That's true. So maybe it's not even nice to say, but this is what I see in practice when I do pen tests. Let's like sometimes it's just a boring job. Like you go to the customer side, you're like, oh no, SMP relay again, working. <gasps> and then you're like, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's pretty much all of the, it is first pen test at the customer size, they end up with something like that. The same mistake, same this and that. So this is what I mean by lacking the basics. Definitely. So that's why, for example, and um, we are at the Microsoft conference, but at the same time, Mark Krasinovich wrote the book, uh, which, which is called Windows Internals. Mm -hmm. I'm really saying always one thing that if you want to start your adventure in security, Windows Internals, unfortunately, comes in two flavors, only 1,500 pages. Not to be read at one night, but maybe for a year. <laughs> <laughs> but but this is a book to yeah. read okay. to actually learn yeah. security basics. Yeah, I, I, I've i spoke to CISOs or security people. They did like firewall stuff and haven't had any idea of how IPv6 works. 
And that's because they said, hey, we'll, we, we only have IPv4, and I, I haven't had the chance to deal with that. I'm like, what? So they could find a good a technical advisor. Yeah. Because question is, does CISO actually need to be that knowledgeable in technologies? Yeah, S it should be tech savvy for sure, but somewhat knowledgeable, sure. in my opinion. Yeah. So, but for sure, CISO needs to have a awareness that he or she is not really like 100% tech savvy or like super geek out there in these technologies. So then this person should hire an advisor. Maybe internally, maybe externally, who knows, but sure. someone who knows these technologies at its best. Like, for example, right now the trend is the information protection. It yeah. used to be there for so many years, but now, like, someone started to talk about it, and we are like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Like, uh, we don't want our documents to leak. So, what was happening, excuse me, for the past 10 years? <laughs> documents were leaking. Ah, oh, okay, yeah, so. Yeah, you, yeah. Know. you see this quite often today. So, everybody yeah. is thinking about, oh, that's brand new, but we had it in the past. So, we also had multi factor out since I don't know when, and now everybody is like, oh, that's a good that's new an idea. That's important <laughs> <thing>. <laughs> so totally. Now we, we, we've heard about the CISOs, and the CISOs, and the CISOs, and the CISOs. What are the top problems of companies oh yeah, or CISOs at all? So pr uh, probably the top problem of a company is that they don't have a CISO who is ready to do his job, maybe. <laughs> okay, yeah, that, that's <laughs> definitely a What problem. are the other challenges you see? Uh, the challenges that I see is that, uh, well, first of all, experience okay. that needs to be built. In general, yes, because uh, we can see, for example, CISOs that are out there for like three months and then uh, they're like, hey, Paula, I'm a, I've just acquired this role. I'm CISO for three months. We need a little bit of help. OK, awesome. Yes, yeah, so let's do something. Or someone might be dealing with security and technology for this person's whole life. And then the, there is a conversion to the CISO role. OK, th I would say that's maybe a little bit better. Yeah, uh, from the first perspective. Now, what is the problem that companies currently have is to build a well, a security framework or cybersecurity framework. So the set of areas that everybody needs to cover and plan a cybersecurity in every single area. Yep. Starting, for example, with, uh, I know it's another very technical subject, but let's say HR. Oh. Who do you hire as your domain admin? It's also a security process, yeah? yeah? And I'm not saying that domain admins are bad, but we've heard the stories where domain admin was actually violating security, and I've participated in a project like that, okay. where we had to do forensics because domain admin was not very nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the end, these people have access to our super secret information, to our company's know-how. So yeah. information protection comes to place, and uh, W there's always this question, who controls the domain admin, et cetera. So there is a little bit of trust that we need to give to this person and secure ourselves with technology. But that trust should be actually a reasonably given trust by a well-designed HR process of so hiring someone yeah. that has access to the full details of our company, right? Yeah. So this is what, what is also a role of a CISO, um, to design these kind of things. But of course, things like technology, what kind of uh, algorithms, what kind of cryptography do we use in our company? Yeah? Is it compliant with X, Y, Z? Is it good for us, bad for us? Yeah? So mm -hmm. do we have important incident response procedures? <laughs> Thanks for laughing. That's yeah, that's, <laughs> a, that's a good thing. Yeah. So lots of companies, they don't have it. And for example, when there was like a forensic project, not really long time ago that we did, one of the first things we ask is yeah. like, okay, so guys, did you manage to get the memory dump, disk dump, etc.? And they were like, uh, no, because yeah. we had to recover because there was business going on, so there was no time for that. Okay, we understand, but that really makes it difficult at the end to spot what actually happened in this and company. Yeah? What, what I see quite often, so from a, I'm working a lot with uh, the system admins, not the security guys in the mm. company, and for them it's like, oh, our antivirus has showed up that there was a Trojan or whatever, and it was deleted, Current so days. everything is fine, yeah. now I'm done. And uh, every time I'm like, are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> are you sure that... It was really just this one file that had been deleted. Are and you interested <laughs> in where, where it came from? Where it came <laughs> from <laughs> and where it went <laughs> and <laughs> what Things, happened before yeah. and after. And yeah. Yeah. It so it's, uh, it's a good thing because you said two or three times now it's processes. And yeah. I've seen so many companies thinking about tools. I paid so many money for my tools and I bought this tool and I bought this tool. And actually, if you don't have a process to deal with the tools, it's, it's a problem. Yeah. Do you see this too? Absolutely, and this is my favorite, actually. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yes, because we got it. <laughs> yeah, it's really my favorite. Uh, so when we have like a initial calls with customers uh, about the pen test, and uh, I'm not, I'm maybe a little, I'm a little bit ironic, yes, over here, but we usually hear like, 
Okay, so, so some of the companies are very aware and that's fantastic. I love to work this way. But some of the companies might be a little bit challenging and they're like, this is an example that always like is out there in my head. We have like three anti-spam solutions. That's a <laughs> quote. I'm like, okay, why do you need three? Because like, we, we, if first one doesn't discover it, then second one, and then the yeah. second one. Then <laughs> and I'm like, why don't you just have one like, but configured well? Oh, no, 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 we prefer to have three. I'm like, okay, great. Yeah. So we do on site, literally, we do the pen test. First day, I wasn't doing it, it was one of our team members. And uh, he's like, hey, you know what? SMB relay, same stuff as ever, yes? So um, from the inside, they were not really secured very well. And where they actually secured from the anti-spam filter? Not really, because we did a bit of a phishing over there as well. Yeah. And that went through. So basically, yeah, it's just really a matter of awareness. And yes, supplying our, ourselves with different types of tools, yeah, um, yeah that's <laughs> never a good thing. There's yeah. still people out there who ask, uh, can we have two AV solutions on, on a client? I was like, no. Oh, can I have seven? <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. Yeah, and, uh, and what we see a lot is that uh, if a breach happens, nobody has an idea on what's what to do next. Do you see that too? And yeah, that's very sad because yeah. it happens. <laughs> so we should so have an idea, there are breaches, right? really? <laughs> no, pff, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> but at the end, uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, so incident procedure response, it's something that can be well designed, well planned. It's not really a difficult process. The well written incident response procedure yep. is like two pager. Yep. Uh, what to do? Uh, one of the funny biggest mistakes that companies make is when they even know that they're supposed to do the memory dump on the disk dump, the first like thing that they are like struggling with is to find the drive, True. the the USB drive, on which you can actually store the evidence. So mm -hmm. they're like, oh yeah, we know what to do. Uh, anybody has a uh, 300 gigs of a free space? Meh. Oh, let me clean this <laughs> for you. I'm like, oh no. Yeah. So there should be this pile of uh, empty drives that is ready for that moment. Yeah. Um, and a toolkit that is an externally plugged in toolkit from which we actually run different types of tools. I've seen a forensic team coming on site and they were installing the FTK on the host that was actually to be analyzed. My okay. heart was like <laughs> bleeding. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so okay. what can so you say? Paula, as we all know, you are very busy at this conference, so you'll have to leave us in a few minutes. But, but I got one last question. Oh no. I've got the last, last no, question. No, you've so got the you very last. I've got, got the, the very last. last. Very last. Very you have to, okay. So everybody knows, the whole world knows you're a security expert. So tell us a secret. How do you stay ahead? How, how do you like? Teamwork. Okay. Seriously, like we are just, I, I mean, I regret that I have only one brain. I would like to have like whatever 10. I would be nice or maybe not for everybody else around. But uh, yeah, uh, the, the teamwork, absolutely. So if I don't have time to check for something, but I try to check the news, absolutely. So uh, I'm like, oh, this is interesting. So I'm like, hey guys, can you please check it? And then whoever has time in our team, these guys check it, but the knowledge is for everybody. So oh, that's great. that is really the power of security, I would say. Yeah? Yeah. So y it's impossible to stay up to date if you are the only one, the only yeah. Only so, so it's nice to team up with someone. Yes, to be a part of some kind of a group. And uh, I'm not saying here like let's socialize or something. No, no, no. But knowledge groups. So the more we are able to cooperate with someone, the more we exchange. And uh, for example, I had a I had a session yesterday. That session that I had was also a teamwork. Yes. Yeah? So I've got an idea. Okay, fine. So let's work on that idea. But. It's like month of preparation. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> basically, can I spend one month on preparation? I would love to. <laughs> I would love to, but that's really not possible. So we always need to be uh, supported by the team members, mm. and uh, that's why the trust is absolutely important. Even though it's an unpopular security statement, yeah, yeah, yeah. but if someone is uh, opting for the same goals as you are, so no more, and let's do everything to no more. And there's like working over hours or after hours, absolutely. But I try to work with people that don't mind. Okay. So now the last and final question for you. Everybody has to answer. It's a it. tough one. It's a tough one. So if you have a magic wish. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what would it be? Insecurity, in cybersecurity. Oh, something okay. That Thanks for yeah, yeah. <laughs> adding. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. I know I that like stuff. Yeah, something like that that you think <laughs> would, would make the. the Your world life or lives of companies easier? Yeah, or so more secure, at least. I mean, uh, more secure would be also okay. Uh, huh, nice. Heike yesterday said uh, if, if she, would, she, she could have the, the magic wish, everybody's on Windows 10. So okay. now it's now it's <laughs> you. What's your wish? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, what's my wish? I mean, I still you said in cybersecurity, so that changes the perspective a little bit. But 
I still want to have my job, you know. So, uh, but uh, at the same time, I really wish that everybody could implement a code execution prevention, so that any tool that we write, it doesn't work. So this is this would be awesome okay. because ransomware has been there for the past five years, and there are still companies that did nothing about it, and yeah. it's really painful yeah. to see that. So basically, disallowing the code that we don't know to run now with well, Microsoft's or Windows uh, Defender ATP, we've got an exploit guard. And exploit guard is an additional layer of protection because the regular antivirus, etc., will not prevent us, will not protect us from, for example, executing the malicious code directly in the memory because our performance, at least nowadays, would die a little bit. Yeah. So that's why we've got an exploit guard that to prevent us from the known techniques of whatever, sure. heap spraying, spray, writing things directly to the memory, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so all these techniques. So these two, but out of these two, if I could just have one to be <laughs> wished for, uh, would be the code execution prevention. Yeah, okay. totally. That that's yeah. a great wish. So Everybody knows that ransomware is out there, but nobody really does something about that. That's really like yeah, yeah, totally. So yes. Paula, it was a pleasure to have Absolute you here. Absolute pleasure. So pleasure. Hopefully, yeah. see you next year again. I can't believe that this time ran so fast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's uh, it's crazy like hell. Thank so we already ended nearly. So first okay. guys are walking around with their uh, with their luggage. So thank you so much. No. Uh, Please give uh, see you around. Thank you. Applause. And Thanks. See you next time. Absolutely. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Paula. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. So, Alex, now as Ignite is nearly finishing, so what has been the most important thing for you? So, actually, I think most announcements are out there. So, what what was your so. conference like? Yeah, I think the, there were a ton of really amazing security announcements. I am really interested and really excited to see that Microsoft made a move to bring all the three ATP solutions together in Microsoft 365 Threat Protection. That's really something that I'm, I totally believe that's, that it uh, is the right decision to have all, uh, one dashboard that, that brings together. We, we, we read yesterday something about 8.4 trillion signals that they have only by mail coming in. That's a huge amount of data. And I think to have like one dashboard, one go-to uh, a solution uh, where you can like manage and, and uh, monitor everything that that you have out there that's the right decision so i'm i was totally happy to to see that there's plenty of like small announcements in windows defender atp uh, there's some conditional access stuff that that i think that was really needed for modern management so yeah i think that's that's the that's thing that's that. that's yeah what okay. about you Oh, <coughs> where should I start? How many how many hours do we Let have? Let me right guess. Now? It's blueprints, isn't it? Everybody's uh, like talking about blueprints. Yeah, blueprints I, I, I really I really like blueprints. Yeah. So because actually it's it's making lives easier. So mm -hmm. that's the the first and most important point. But also it's making things secure. So I see so many companies right now just rolling out some Azure stuff and giving everybody access to it, and yeah. there's no control in it. There are no policies. There's no proper role-based access control, and actually there are no blueprints to how to set up a web app so or how true. to set up a data warehouse solution in a secure way right now. And actually with Blueprints, you can go together with your CISO and have a look like, okay, how do we do it so that's secure? How do we build a solution yeah. and a process that is working? And Blueprints really will help this. Um, and actually, I really like the uh, announcements in, in kind of security center in Azure, where we <laughs> will have the secure score for Azure in now, and we will have some other improvements. Um, so that's probably my two top points beneath yeah. all those fancy performance announcements like ultra SSDs yeah. and um, announcements about storage performance and, and everything like yeah. this. Se secure score is something is really, I mean, that's that's something that, that people or uh, our customers really ask for. Uh, how do we deal compared to another company? How do we deal overall? And that's something that you can read out very easily out of, out of a dashboard that says, hey, that's a sec secure score. It contains this, 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 and that feature. And if you would like enable this uh, in a in a broad deployment, you would be high uh, uh, about so many points, and that's something that I think will will be very interesting. Okay. So last question for today. We've never done this before. What's your magic wish? Oh boy, I wish. <laughs> so, so, so <laughs> yeah, I, I, I totally, I, I totally liked the the, the idea of Heike yesterday to say. Uh, bring everybody to Windows 10 because I, from from my opinion, it's still something that the people are having a, a, a very tough time to bring over their applications to like bring the different scenarios that they got with uh, people that are out there in the wild and and uh, and doing like 
very, very hard jobs, uh, bringing them to Windows 10. We saw a lot of announcements around autopilot, so I, I think We're this in a good is way. something, yeah, yeah, we're in a good way. But uh, there's uh, plenty of things. Uh, we saw MSIX as a, as a new way of bringing applications to, to the uh, Windows 10 machines. I, I, I totally agree on um, that we, we need something like that because, yeah, like uh, solutions called Citrix or, uh, or whatever, they, they get little attention to, to when it comes to the modern management or yeah. modern workplace. And I think uh, what, what Microsoft announced recently is uh, the right direction to go to. Okay, great. Yeah. So my magic wish would be Tell uh, me. that we are back at Sunday yeah. so that I can go through all the <laughs> sessions again because actually yeah. I'm so starting so you need to holiday. forget about all right. things. Good. Um, but we have all those live recordings so you can have a look into it later again. Yeah. Um, so yeah, thank you for attending. Thank uh, you so much for coming. Thank you for, for listening to us. Guys. And have a nice rest of the event and yeah. celebrate today. Yeah. Thanks. Have fun. Bye-bye. <laughs>